and I sitting here in the vocal room, yes, and we're going to record special edition limited shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to this little track by track commentary by the six Sixtener uh, band members from the beginning, Daniel Kirchhoff and Jens Wallis. Hello Jens. Hi Daniel. So, how was your day Jens? Yes, really, really good. Um, today we finished the drum tracks. Oh wow. For, for the album. Holy, oh my gosh. Holy cow. <laughs> how productive. <laughs> of course, as, as usual. <laughs> You're the next drum god, I know that. Ah, okay. <laughs> but as uh, as I saw, uh, your drumming is very, very well. Yes, I, I think the next time I do some, some blast parts. Yes, of course. Of, of course, we, we need that. So that my name is on every point of the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, but uh, that's my unusual Extreme great ego, <laughs> and I just need it. So <laughs> and who does need a drummer? I mean, yes, we have drunk it from hell. Yes, <laughs> of course. And he's uh, in time too. So yeah, yeah. What Jens doesn't is yeah, always, yeah, but yeah. that's that's some part of his signature sound. So <laughs> <laughs> I just can't play the drums. <laughs> Yes, why not? I, I you're, just, just, you're just a drummer, so yes, yes, why should yes. you play the drums? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I just hit on everything I see, so... <laughs> yeah, and exactly that's how it sounds. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, now it's and with funny, like we say in Germany, and... <laughs> let's... <laughs> don't laugh at me, bro. So, um, let's go through the, through the tracks. I, I think. Yes, of course. And uh, I'm, I think this might be seem a little crazy, but maybe we should start with track one. And uh, track one is the prologue. So, uh, Jens, what what do you think of of the prologue in this uh, on this album? We needed a little thing to introduce the album. We just didn't want to. Uh, punch you in the face with the first track. Yes, who wanted? Yes, yes, it's it's not... Uh... But Jens, uh, I don't know, but I, I just heard a bird singing and uh, it told me that on this album there is a story being told. Um, is this story even uh, there on the prologue or is it just uh, some, uh, some high school kids trying to play their instruments? Or uh, is, is, is there something uh, beyond the music? <laughs> of course. Are, are these only two high school kids playing music? Of course. Yes. <laughs> Yes, of course. We're just some high school kids, and we just uh, um, um, get our high school math teacher in here to record some um, speaking vocals. Yes, and of uh, she doesn't do it uh, much better than she teaching algebra. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to Samantha, yeah, you were a better vocalist than a teacher. So, um, <laughs> let's. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to the second track. The second uh, track is the first uh, real track. Yeah. So um, it's called The Strolling Chaos. One of my favorite tracks. Yes. Uh, even one of the my favorite tracks to record. Okay. Um, Why? It has all I, I, I adore. Uh, fast drumming, <laughs> but not too fast. No black metal blast beat or something like that. And uh, it has a very, very catchy... Um, a refrain, so uh, I really, really like this. Yeah, track. a little Celtic sounding, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I fought on uh, on um, on Ireland when I I was never be there, but uh, I just wrote a melody uh, <laughs> like someone who doesn't be there but uh, think. He, <laughs> but he, he just know is. everything. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, man. I was in Ireland. <laughs> I can play this. And you can also hear on this track um, the first growlings. I ever record for Six Hundred, and um, yes, I was surprised how uh, 
how barely good I, I sound when I growl. As I said it, he totally fucked up. A very deep sounding and um, yes, I I just wanted to make the vocals this time or, or my screaming and guttural vocals a little more dynamic, a little more versatile. And uh, hopefully I <laughs> I reached that um, I reached that because um, I just recognized that I used uh, almost six different <laughs> vocal techniques, including clean vocals and uh, some vocals which uh, sound more like a um, crying baby. But uh, it perfectly fits uh, when, into the song. When he sings, uh, I, I I think my ears bleed in a bled. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for a metal vocalist, that's a good point. Yes. <laughs> Ne, weil ich habe gar nicht aufgenommen gerade. Oh. Nochmal. How to sound like an angry dog. So, um, when we go on to the tracklist, we have a two-part song or um, two songs with a very similar name, which uh, some kind uh, go together or... Um, Yes, it's uh, the Raven Cries part one and two. So we start with uh, part one, of course. Yes. And um, Jens, when the Raven Cries part one, do you even remember this one? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember anything I did yesterday. So <laughs> very, very bad. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. He's going to therapy, and yes, hopefully this will be better on the next my, album. My dementia is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> this is the first song, actually, uh, which may be not that appreciated by the ones who really adore our EP, because with this track, we, we try something different. We... Um, We tried to be a more in a more catchy way. I tried to uh, compose in a more catchy way, and um, especially when you hear the chorus, um, this is a very yeah maybe some pop uh, style uh, vo vocals and a melody. Yes. Um, which yes, it, this album is definitely not for the uh, old school black metal audience. It's a more sorry guys. So it's this time it's it's more for for people who like to to listen to a story and to a music which fits to the scenes within the story and uh, of course the story doesn't um, exist or consist only of uh, brutal splatter scenes so uh, there has to be some some songs who are more more soft and m more melody driven catchy. And uh, but I think uh, this this kind uh, of songs really fit uh, to the album, really uh, do this album good, and yes, makes it more versatile. So that's that, that's that's the point I, I can say. I think uh, when you compare this one to the EP, uh, is uh, much more versatile, much more yes, yes. details, much more of everything. Yeah, yeah. You can you can't put this album into one direction. It's 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 no black metal. It's yes. no post metal. No. It's no dark metal. No, it's it's uh, it's not gothic metal, at, gothic and symphonic metal at all. Yes. So, uh, but uh, we are sure that this album will reach its fans. Oh, of course. So let's go on to "When the Raven Cries," part two. Yeah. Here we have um, a little rendition of a, a forgotten tune track <laughs> I I listened to uh, some time ago. And yeah. yes, the whole track is a little more straightforward. Yes. A little. I think this is maybe one of the tracks which are, um, which go the most in this black metal kind of sound. Yeah. We have we have some uh, some post black metal influence uh, on this as well, and there's much more screaming in there. Um, 
And yeah, I think uh, what stands out in song is um, the outro or uh, the last part, which uh, changed into a very aggressive and um, for the first time uh, some epic sounding. And uh, yes, on this track you can first hear some of my baby scream vocals, vocals, <laughs> or vocals <laughs> as you as you see it, <laughs> or like you see it. <laughs> And um, hello, silencer. <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello. And <laughs> this is a short glimpse of the one who doesn't <laughs> listen to the song yet. <laughs> and yeah, I, I'm a part of the song. I, I I'm a part of the song, and it was a uh, lot of fun to uh, to write and to record it as well. And I think for you too. Yes, yes, of course. Examination of the Atrocity is the next song we want to talk about. And uh, this song is the first song which really focuses on the uh, on the female vocals. Yeah. Um, it had almost no screaming vocals except from the last part. And yeah, it's it's very um, vocal driven in, in the verses. The instruments are very high back. And, yeah. And yes, it wasn't an easy journey, I have to admit. <laughs> Because uh, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, tracking the female vocals was um, was like going into the hardest, but ten times worse. <laughs> and um, yeah, but uh, we think <laughs> it was uh, definitely worth it. Blood, sweat, piss, and tears went into <laughs> this performance. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I cried blood and tears <laughs> <laughs> and piss. <laughs> Maybe, but. Uh, <laughs> That's a PG, so <laughs> <laughs> we, we skip that out. <laughs> <laughs> then we come to the last song of the first act, because I wrote a story, and I wrote a story in a three-act structure. And uh, so this is the first act. It starts with the prologue and ends with this song, which is I Will Prevail. And I heard, uh, Jens, that uh, you really like this song. So yeah. I would hear uh, something about... Your opinion on this song? Yeah, the first part uh, in this song, uh, the, the drum parts, the first drum parts in this in this song, uh, I just thought about like one minute, and then it uh, then it was there. And uh, this song was the fastest song I um, I wrote the parts. I, I think at least. Uh, Five, five to ten minutes, and uh, the song was ready for me. <laughs> not, 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 uh, not recording. Recording was a little bit longer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but the idea for the, for the drum tracks was uh, was there in like five or ten minutes. So <laughs> this was the fa fastest I uh, I can remember. <laughs> so. Um A little detail for the older fans of uh, Six and a, it could be that this song was all, or, or the lyrics for this song were already published on the EP because uh, back in the days we... Uh, long, long time ago. Uh, yes, one year ago. So uh, <laughs> we released uh, our uh, self-titled EP and on this EP, on the, f the third track was um, I Am Here, I Won't Fail. So uh, then it was recorded by our guest singer Janina Jones which did a very good job, I think. Yeah, of course. Um, but this time, um, I totally rewrite it. And um, because of two, uh, two reasons. Uh, the first reason is um, because this uh, song is much better uh, when it comes to songwriting and the riffs uh, and stuff. And on the other hand, I really want to, I really want I Am Here to stand out on its own. Because... Um, Uh, like I said, it, Janina recorded the vocals, and if we just do the song again with with Naila doing the vocals, it it would I, it would feel like uh, Janina was um, was the, the wrong choice. Was the wrong choice, and yeah. uh, we doesn't want it. I, I am here with a really really cool song, and uh, 
so much people love this song. And it, this was, it, was, it was one of the most popular songs of the EP. Yes. We just, uh, or we mostly get uh, positive reactions on this. And of course, we're no lazy asses who think, oh yes, we have an EP and we put all four tracks of the EP on the new album. So we get a lot of lot more tracks. <laughs> yes, Jens. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think we, we even don't write this uh, in, the, in the promo booklet that we... No. Listen, no, 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 no. I, I don't think so. So, we're back again in the studio today <laughs> <laughs> to record the track commentary. So, and uh, this time we take a look on the second act, which is a little bit um, shorter than the first act, with, and it consists of four songs, and the first one of it is an interlude, because uh, I like to, uh, to have an interlude after every act to to make place for, for the new act and f for the new... To introduce, to, to to introduce, introduce new plot yes, lines. Yes. And, and this, uh, it starts with the song Simum. And uh, maybe uh, the, uh, one or another uh, would ask, uh, hey, <laughs> Daniel, crazy motherfucker, <laughs> what, what in the hell is a Simum? And um, James, <laughs> yeah. do you know what a Simum is? No. No, you don't even know it. <laughs> even I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> then you can see how professional 69X. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, um, I want uh, to close this. Uh, you just this you, lack of knowledge. You, you, you just show the page in, 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 in a dictionary and put the finger on it and oh see boom yes of course it's the it's the title for the song <laughs> I, I, I think it's in some uh, some sort of plan so yes uh, yes no uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> no um, um you can uh, tell me here to be serious to be serious, just for one time. Um, a simum is uh, uh, some sort of desert wind and desert storm which blows uh, within the Sahara and Gobi and the, uh, the Near East. It, it's a storm which can be between very intense and very big. And um, I imagined the, the story or, or the plot of the next song, which will be uh, through Sand and Pain, this, uh, the two protagonists of our story, which, which are Fang Wen and Amaruk, um, they are traveling through this, this, this endless, endless journey, through this uh, endless <laughs> wastelands. Through this, <laughs> through this <laughs> wasteland <laughs> wastelands! Uh, there you can see uh, uh, definitely that uh, Dragon Force is my absolute favorite band. Really, really, I, I, I fucking love Dragon Force. So far uh, away! <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the lyrics uh, wrote, written by, by Sam Topman are just great. They are so deep and, uh, and really touch my heart. Daniel's doing some Dragon Force style vocals. We're driving through the last air when wasteland so far and away. Yes, and I think that these two protagonists go through this, this endless desert and uh, there comes a storm and they have to fight to, 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 to go to the, to the, um, to the palace of, of the Raven Goddess. Yes, which which they only don't doesn't even, even know what what uh, this this character even is and um, yeah well, I think this was a, a pretty good choice for the name and yeah this is a instrumental interlude and um, I s this is very simple arranged we ha we just have um, three tracks two for the guitars one for the bass and then the fourth track uh, for the drums and this was the foundation for me to. Uh, let let Jens creativity flow a little bit. Um, <laughs> that, li that that little bit of creativity I have. <laughs> There's the one woods woods left. And <laughs> and uh, yes, I think this is one of the songs which, uh, when it comes to the drums, are uh, the most versatile and the most standing out and the more in the foreground. Yes, yes, and it was just one take. It, uh, yeah, like I said, it was just progressive. Technical metal gent. <laughs> it was the gent. <laughs> like we like to call it the gent. The gent. The gent. The gent. Yes. And uh, for everyone who <laughs> who thinks, oh, maybe uh, no, no, there are no gent riffs on this album. Maybe on the next one, but not this time. No. We don't want to go that far because Daniel doesn't have an eight string guitar. Yes, uh, <laughs> but when we for now. By the way. Six string would be enough. Actually, I'm playing with four strings. <laughs> but if you buy the album, 
and uh, give us the financial support, I maybe get out and buy a very good Ibanez 8-string guitar and then we can play our songs in drop B flat. So Yes, of course. So, but, but maybe next time. <laughs> so, let's come to the next real song. Uh, through Sand and Pain sounds a little bit more Arabic, yes. Daniel. Yes. Yes. And it was, uh, for me, it was <laughs> very hard to play because this uh, fast drum beat, uh, this was the first time I ever played something like that. Uh, it's not like I can play fast things, but this ufta ufta part, <laughs> yes. as you say, it, 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 this de death metal part was very hard for me. Yes, even for me, uh, for the guitars, it was just just a mess. Uh, I, I took around two hours to uh, to record this shit. And uh, yes, um, but I think it sounds really good. It's um, it's the most black metal sounding riff on the entire album, yeah. and um, it really fit into the song. It's, it's uh, also like um, the melodies. I used the Egypt sc uh, scale for this, and even this riff has some kind of oriental feeling, and uh, yes, it, it's really it's really cool. And uh, it also changes a little bit in the end part. So in the end part, the guttural vocals are replaced by the female vocals of our very sympathic singer and yes this is a very good transition to the next song which is uh, the audience and the audience starts with an with a very orchestral piece even there are some brasses in there yeah. i really like the brasses <laughs> I, I just a trumpet guy <laughs> 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 even in my spare time and <laughs> Yes, but but then after this uh, very cool and epic intro, it um, it transits into a more metal driven uh, driven song, and it's a very important song when it comes to the story because this time our two girls really uh, f is the first time who met this this raven girl, uh, which turned out to be a god. So, oh my God! <laughs> oh my! Oh my Goddess! So, um, who who could expect that? Yes. Uh, this, uh, what a twist! <laughs> yes, and uh, this is a spoiler, by the way. Uh, and uh, I like to address spoilers after I done them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it, 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 it's some kind of God. It's um, it's a God of harmony. This God uh, tells them something. I don't know. Uh, don't uh, want to tell uh, what she said to them. But um, yes, <laughs> um, after them, they're going to the desert again, <laughs> and uh, maybe Jens can tell us what uh, happened on the next song, which will be an unexpected encounter. Yeah, and uh, on an unexpected encounter, this song is very, very, for me as a drummer, Post black metal style because of the long, long finish, yes. uh, which uh, at the beginning is very simplistic, and the drums then go faster and faster, but not too fast. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it's it, it's it builds a tension, and uh, I from for me I think it sounds a little bit like old Alceste. Do you think so? Yes, of course. Um, I, 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 I feel remembered. Okay. Um, when it comes to an unexpected encounter, I, can, I, I could uh, put some history lessons in here oh, concerning, no! concerning <laughs> Sixena. Because <laughs> um, when we started the band back in 2011, we started the band as a true black metal project under the name Setna. Back in the day, yeah, and um, <laughs> we <laughs> at first we want we we uh, we, uh, we uh, thought we should uh, do a concept album of uh, with an Inuit fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are, we were very captivating by captivated by this um, this mythology and. Um, and then we start to write the first concepts, and um, but we were a truly black metal 
uh, act back then. And this is this is where Six Hundred comes from. This is where I come from musically. And yes, back uh, back in that time, I was in in a point of my life which I suffered on depression, and I I listened to uh, DSBM or Depressive Suicide Black Metal uh, back in the days. And I really like this genre till today. Of course, yeah. I think it's a very intense yeah. uh, genre. I, I, I also really I think like it's this. a little overdose. There are too many bands out there who too, sit too, in... Too many generic bands. Too many generic bands who just sit in a back, uh, back room or in a bathroom uh, and starting a one-man band. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I, I don't know who in the world can listen to a one-hour st uh, street board straight and... Uh, enjoy this <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but um, when depressive suicide black metal is um, really done it's just an emotional and just an great uh, genre yeah and uh, yes back then I uh, I wrote um, in that style too um, you can when you visit our YouTube channel which is called Sixina Official um, there are some old demos up there and you can really uh, hear These, uh, these depressive societal uh, influences back then. Mm -hmm. And to come to an unexpected encounter again, after <laughs> a little execution, um, this is a song where I took these influences in this, this, this background for myself and uh, turned it into not a real DSBM song, but uh, into a song which kept uh, captures this this atmosphere yeah. and this um, this melancholic feel and this dramatic feel so i started the song very slow um, with uh, some melody guitars so there were um, three guitars three lead guitars in there which built the melody up and then explode with yes. the drums to um, to the first verse and there were uh, also the most extreme vocals there um, Uh, Silencer was uh, was called uh, some some seconds ago, and um, yeah, this is this is definitely one of the best bands and the one of the vocal vocalists who influenced me the most when it comes to this extreme vocals, like like we uh, like I do it on on this one, and I'm very proud of this song. I I, I think this is one of uh, of the most atmospheric yes, songs on yes, the album. Definitely, and it's also a very um, dramatic scene. So I, I don't want to tell what's happening because it's a very big twist. Um, <laughs> but uh, the dramatic sound definitely fits to the plot. I was for Billie Jean. Or the Earth Song. With a lot of orchestra. I can also sing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hi folks, we are back in the studio today to record the track commentary. And today we're gonna uh, take a look on the third and last act of our story and on the album, which is called Advice Tale, which you should know because <laughs> you buy the album. And, <laughs> <laughs> and yes, like uh, the, the second act, uh, even this one starts with an interlude called Exasperation. And Yes, on uh, I did this time we uh, we did a more simple drum riff, but uh, therefore the guitars are a little more in the foreground, and we used uh, some kind of guitar effects and uh, tried to get a, some kind of showcase atmosphere showcase, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, even some acoustic parts. It's the first time in the studio I could record an acoustic guitar. It was uh, just a great experience. <laughs> Even when my fingers bled, because uh, I use a steel string guitar here, and uh, I normally um, I'm a classical guitar player for f uh, almost 15 years now, and I never played steel strings, and <laughs> it, it, it just hurt. It just was a mess, but uh, it sounds good, and so I'm uh, I'm happy I, I did it. And yes, it's, a, it's a, again a very atmospheric sound. We did uh, a song on the EP called "The Sleeper." Which was an instrumental piece too, 
And um, we also get very positive reactions on this. And um, yes, with the with these interludes, we want uh, to to keep to keep this part of our sound on the album because we we doesn't find uh, find space to put some of this stuff in into the real songs. <laughs> But I definitely want that uh, want it want it to have happened. And uh, yes, I'm I'm very very okay with this one. Very satisfied. Very satisfied. Yes, of course. <laughs> Queen of the Waging Flood is the next one we want to talk about. Yes, this is a song which I want you to tell something about by Jens, because Jens was the one who wrote, who wrote the lyrics to this one. Yeah, of course. Uh, um, let me begin uh, at the beginning of our band. Yeah, um, okay. yeah yes, of course. As <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, Queen of the Raging Flood was at first an idea by me. Uh, I had this idea for years and wanted to write a story uh, about uh, a girl who is just, who just has enough of this world and wants to end her life and just dive into the sea and uh, don't want uh, to live anymore. So uh, the Queen of the Raging Flood was the back then it was the title, and uh, of the album. Yes, yes, of course. Of the, yes, yes, and uh, yeah. For now, the story I, I thought of wasn't that complex, that complex and uh, that long. So we just integrated it into this story that Daniel. Wrote. Yes, um, Jens and I uh, met on a bookstore, and then he, he told me about his idea of, of the story and of the, of the scene, and uh, I, I said, wow, this is just awful. No, uh, I, I, this was very great. I, I thought this, this scene was very great. It, it was in my mind and uh, comes really to life in my mind, and I, I just wanted to, to write a story for that. And, and we already started to write the story for the album Queen of the Raging Flood, but um, then we drove it away and um, we start to write a dry tale. Or I start to write a dry tale. <laughs> like I said, I have to, to hang up my ego. So. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the story is just by me. <laughs> you, <laughs> you've, got, you've got such big balls, they're hanging <laughs> to the ground. I have <laughs> elephant balls till map. <laughs> so, and. <laughs> Cojones. But I, I definitely want this amazing scene to be integrated to the story and so um, this scene was already there on the beginning of the third act mm -hmm. and all I have to do was to write an, an second and first act mm -hmm. and yes I'm, I'm very proud of this song and on this song there is even mm -hmm. a voice actor yeah um, Friday Wolf which um, doing the character voice for the sleeper which appears here and uh, she did a very amazing job and uh, we, uh, we really Uh, give this song a much deeper atmosphere and uh, I, I totally love that it's um, so it, it does is does really feel more like um, like a movie or like um, like a musical tale yeah like a, like a soundtrack yes we're close to the end guys but there are <laughs> still three songs left and The next song we want to talk about is March of the Underwater Legion. And March of the Underwater Legion is the second song which uh, Jens wrote the lyrics for. Yeah. And uh, so, Jens, tell me something about what What do you thought about this stuff? <laughs> Not much. Neil, no, uh, just kidding. Um, it was uh, also, also there when I had the idea for Queen of the Raging Flood. Uh, the protagonist dives into the sea. Um, but isn't killed. She just transforms into a, an ocean god um, who just wants to take revenge on, on, the, on the earth and swallows the land by water and leads her underwater legion, so all creatures who are living in the great deep blue sea. Uh, <laughs> blue as the ocean is <laughs> to just 
so that the world is just swept away. All all humans are swept away by underwater legions. Yeah, this is uh, how you can hear. This is the mo the most aggressive song. Yeah. Even from the lyrics and of course from from the musical, we also have uh, a little slam part in here. Jung 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 jung. Because um, I'm not uh, just a big DSPM pop <laughs> and <laughs> German folk music fan. <laughs> um, I also really adore slam or slamming brutal death metal, like uh, it is called, um, for some parts. And I thought, if there's a song or uh, a scene in the story where I can put a very generic slam part, yeah, <laughs> this is the one to go. Like, like you can hear it on thousands of sl brutal slam death metal albums. <laughs> it is definitely my cranium and abominable putridity and putrid pile reference. But sl a slam death metal part with a cowbell. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Who has heard of that before? <laughs> yes. And a uh, original slam style snare drum. Of course. <laughs> we had some issues to a, s a snare drum without a snare. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have some issues. We have we had uh, some issues. Is is it? Uh, oh, uh, like you heard, I'm not a native. English Spiaka. Um, <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> I don't know. Um, we had uh, some problems. <laughs> I don't knuff. <laughs> By recording <laughs> the drums, but um, every, everything turned out right, and uh, this song uh, is it's just great with, with, with all. And yes, of course, all songs are great. Yes. <laughs> but uh, then we have a really, really extreme break because this song is the most extreme and aggressive. And then we come to the next song, which is The Sacrifice, and which is the last uh, real song on the album, which is a ballad. Yeah. This, is, this is the first ballad I ever wrote. And uh, yes, we, we want a, a more quiet, a more introverted and flowing outro on, on this album. And uh, we think this, this song is, is doing well. It's, it's very uh, piano driven. Yes. And The drums are kept very simple. Yes, even even the the guitars there. They are all very uh, piano and strings, and um, and the 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 drums were so simplistic that even Daniel tried to play this, and it wasn't bad either. Daniel is such a fucking poser. Now you see what a real drummer is. <laughs> All preparation. Uh, is this thing even on? All right. Yes, of course. <laughs> But why was better? <laughs> <laughs> if, if Jens uh, would have uh, said that I was bad, I would fire him because I'm yeah. boss. Yeah, you, you <laughs> the dictator. <laughs> <laughs> the one and only, the mighty sun goddess. Yes, the, ki the, ki <laughs> the Kim Jong Il <laughs> of Tipson. <laughs> the goddess, especially. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, I think this is, a, this is a very good ending. Yeah. And it, it shows another side of the band, which will be explored more in the next album. Yeah. Which are already written. <laughs> and so be prepared. So be prepared, <laughs> and uh, you won't uh, be left long without any new 16 output. Yes. And yeah, that that it, that's, that it was already. We have. Uh, The epilogue, which is uh, again done by uh, the vocal, uh, the voice actor Samantha, our loving math teacher, <laughs> and <laughs> and um, it, it fits very well. The music and and uh, the the things that are told um, uh, fits very good together, and it's a very atmospheric and a very yes 
some kind of positive ending. It's, it's some kind of happy end, I, I could say, but uh, not so happy as you could expect it. Because there are people dying and and um, yeah, but this this rounds the album up very good. And so we have a story which which works. We took a one year to uh, to write this, mm -hmm. and um, it was a, a journey to this record, which was not always easy, um, but now it's done and. Very happy, and we hope that you, my dear listeners, um, will appreciate this album. And um, yeah, of course, we do it for you, of course. <laughs> Just not only for us. Of course, we do it for us, but um, of, of course, it, it's great that when uh, other people listen to, to our stuff, to the stuff you wrote, and uh, s uh, said, hey, that's cool, and I, I like it. And yes. The best feeling you can have, of course. And this was our little short, <laughs> very very short, very very short <laughs> track by track commentary. And yeah, thank you for listening. Yeah, uh, I had fun doing this. Yeah, of course. No, <laughs> I did. I, I didn't really have fun. I was. I was threatened. I. I just had to do this. <laughs> 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 he, he put a pistol. <laughs> Sorry, Jens, that I have to interrupt your uh, elaboration, but um, the tape is almost uh, at the end, and I, I have to hurry up. So, um, thank you for, for listening, and have fun with the album, and yes, see you soon, and good luck. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> That's what you unbedingt reinbringen. Ich hatte keinen Spaß. <laughs> <laughs> nee. <laughs> <laughs>